Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar about MIDAS and FX. Today uh, we'll talk about heat transfer and thermal stress simulation. Thank you for joining this webinar. Before we begin the session I'd like just to ask if you can hear me well and then uh, we'll begin. So I think you have a chat section. So you can leave me a message to, to say if it's okay. Okay, I already have some feedback, so we're ready to, to begin the session. Okay, so first of all, uh, I'm Cyprin, so I'm the International Technical Manager for Midas and FX in uh, Midas IT in South Korea. And today I will be the presenter for this heat transfer and thermal stress simulation webinar. So we have a lot of things to talk about. Um, so you see here the, the menu. We'll talk about heat transfer uh, overview, well, the basics about uh, heat transfer. We'll see what, what are a linear, nonlinear heat transfer. We'll talk about steady state and transient heat transfer and thermal stress. Uh, then we will see a bit comparison of heat transfer and linear static and finally I will talk briefly about the difference between structural and uh, CFD analysis. So if you have some questions during the webinar uh, you can ask at any time and I will try to answer during the webinar or maybe at the end of the session. So I prepared a lot of uh, examples to show you concretely how it works in the software so you can understand uh, how to perform such analysis by yourself. So let's start with the basics about heat transfer. And uh, th so this is really uh, the basic that you need to know. Uh, to analyze the heat flow, which is due to the temperature, uh, you need to analyze the change of temperature and all that is due to three heat transfer methods, uh, the conduction, the convection and the radiation. So first of all the conduction. Uh, conduction is the heat energy which is transferred through the vibration of the molecules. So if like in the picture here you have two solids which are in contact, uh, you know the heat, the heat is transferring from one solid to another due to the vibration uh, of the, the molecule of the solid. So this is called the conduction. Second type is the convection. So convection is the heat energy transfer through the movement of a medium. So it can be a liquid or a gas. So you have inside you have water. So you see the water uh, is boiling and you have some exchange of temperature inside the water and this is called convection. Um, it's not only with water, it can be with air, so the air around the solid is also uh, doing some convection around. And the final type of heat transfer is called the radiation. So radiation is the heat energy transferred through electromagnetic waves. So when you have two objects separated and even if we, you don't have any medium between the two, so it can be the void between the two, the radiation is capable to transfer the heat from one point to another. So uh, the most simple example of that is uh, the sun, uh, which is uh, which is creating heat on Earth. So this is uh, the basic type of radiation. Now, um, if we go back to the finite element analysis, here you have a small diagram which represents the kind of heat loads uh, and boundary condition that you can encounter when you are doing a heat uh, transfer analysis. So first of all, you, your medium can be insulated. So if you don't have uh, heat exchange, you can insulate your, uh, your model. You have the application of the convection on the external face. Uh, you have radiation also on external face or inside if you have a cavity radiation inside your model. Um, you can have heat generation internally generated by your solid, so uh, heat source. And you can have also uh, a flux uh, of uh, energy around. 
So, and, and the final thing is that you can fix the temperature at a certain point uh, of your model. So, uh, let's talk a bit more in detail about each of these uh, types of analysis because uh, it's important to understand how it works before we enter into the real uh, analysis, let's say the simulation of that. The first uh, type, the conduction, so it's very simple, uh, you can think about this plate, uh, 20 degrees Celsius on one side, 100 degrees Celsius on the other side, and uh, the heat is propagating through a low, which is called the Fourier's low, and is defined like that, Q, which is the heat flux, is equal to minus K uh, multiplied by the temperature gradient. So the K is the conductivity, which is a matter of property, so uh, the, the speed at which the, the heat is propagating depends on your material, of course. And there's a minus sign because the temperature is always going from the high temperature region to the low temperature region. Now let's talk about convection. So you have several types of convection. The first type uh, is called, let's say, forced convection. So uh, it is a case when you have, um, let's say, a fan or uh, something cooling your system, which is uh, in your model, and it is creating a flux of air, maybe of water, around your solid, and it is cooling your model. So uh, the heat is going out from the model due to that. So this is why it's called forced convection. It's kind of... Uh, so this type of analysis is made in CFD, so fluid dynamic analysis, usually. And we'll have a webinar about that next week, but I'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, free and natural convection is a second type of analysis, which is not forced like the, the previous one, but in this case we would like to know, uh, for example, I have an LED model which is emitting heat, and I would like to know what is the influence on the air around my model, so how is it heating the air around my model, uh, what is the, the convection? So this is called natural convection. So here you have a, a simple LED model, and here you have the convection phenomena. So you see the, the chip temperature here around is causing uh, some, some fluid movement uh, up the, the body, so, and this is natural convection. So again, this is in CFD, fluid dynamic analysis. Um, you have a third uh, thing to, to consider, which is called the Newton's law. Um, in case you don't consider the fluid, so in most of the time when you are in structural analysis, and today we will be in this case, you, um, you will use the Newton's law to, uh, let's say, approximate the, the convection phenomenon around your model. So you don't model the fluid, but instead you will use this equation to to tell your model uh, the heat around my model will change following the Newton's law. So you don't have really to model the fleet, you can directly assign the convection like a load. So this is what I will do during the demonstration. Um, now the heat transfer methods. So first of all, radiation. Uh, okay, so the third one, I mean, the third type that uh, I talked about, the radiation. Um, this is a phenomenon which, in which energy is transferred through ele electromagnetic waves, uh, even if you don't have any medium. So it is, uh, it follows the, the law which is here, uh, which is uh, quite complex because it is a nonlinear type of heat transfer. So you see that you have a T which is a temperature at a power 4. So it means that it's nonlinear, and you have other uh, type of uh, constants you have to define are the Stefan-Boltzmann constant uh, and radiation view factor, the emissivity, absorptivity, and then the, the, the temperature, the reference temperature, etc. So you can either uh, neglect or consider the gravity radiation 
in some cases when your model is closed and you analyze the radiation inside a, a cavity. Now, um, let's talk about linear and nonlinear heat transfer. So, first of all, linear heat transfer. So, um, you know, linear is always some kind of simplification of the reality. So, in the case of a linear heat transfer, the thing that uh, we'll do is that the, the flow condition uh, and the, the thermal flow condition will be kind of fixed. So, the material properties are uniform and do not vary uh, based on the temperature. So, for most heat transfer analysis, we will uh, use that because it's the most simplest type of analysis. Uh, it's linear, so it's uh, done in one step. And, uh, and then you can use uh, general material conduction, convection, and heat flux. So, you have an example here that uh, we'll perform right after. Okay, right now. So, let uh, me go into uh, Midas and FX. Okay. And now, uh, I will show you how you can perform a simple linear heat transfer analysis. So, just wait a few seconds that I prepare. So, uh, okay. So, the first thing I'll do, okay, or maybe I think I had a description, yeah, okay. So, this is the boundary condition I assigned to my model, so this is what I want to do. This is my target model, the length, and I have a boundary condition in temperature. So, first of all, I want to assign a fixed temperature of 60 degrees to the three uh, glasses of the lamp. And uh, on the other parts, there will be the convection condition with 20 degrees Celsius and 10 watt per meter as the convection coefficient. So, let's do it. So, the first thing is to import my model. So, uh, let me search for it briefly in my computer. Okay, found it. Lamp. Open. Okay, so um, first thing you see is that there are some inscription on this lamp and uh, this is something that I don't want for the simulation because it's, it's making the model more complex. So, I will just remove that using the simplification tool we have in Minus and Effects. So, I will use the manual remove faces. I select the faces here, remove them, and you see that it has disappeared, so it's better. The second important thing is that you should be sure that you have the imprint of one part on another in order to have a good uh, transfer of the heat between the parts. So, if I hide this lamp, you see that the, this part has no imprint on this part, but the sh two parts should be linked together, so I have to change a bit my model to make it uh, suitable for the analysis. And to do that, it's very simple. I just use the auto-connect, uh, which is a new feature of NFX 2014. So, I select all the parts, I click on Boolean, and you see the imprint has been created. So, if I hide my lamp now, I have the imprint of the lamp on this. So, it's good. I can go on. So, um, the next step we'll do is to create some materials for this uh, analysis. So, uh, I go into Material window. By default, I have alloy steel, but I don't want that, so I will delete it. And instead, I will assign another isotropic material. So, let's check in the Material Library about the aluminium alloy. And Let's add this one. Okay, apply. And now I have to add the glass material for the glass. So I click on glass. And I have created my two materials. 
And what I'll do now is I will create some properties which is assigned to this material. So a solid property. Okay. Aluminium. So I remind that the property is made to transmit, uh, to make a kind of link between the, the material and the mesh. Sorry, I'm quitting Skype. Okay. So I created the, the aluminium property, glass. Okay, so now I have two properties, aluminium and glass. And now I can begin to assign my uh, boundary condition. So the first boundary is to set a temperature of 60 degrees to the, the glass of the lamp. So let's go into temperature here. Uh, let's select the three glass parts and assign a temperature of 60 degree. Okay. Now uh, that I did that, the next step is to assign the convection. So to assign the convection, you have a button here, convection. Click on it faces. And here there's something a bit tricky, so uh, take uh, just attention on that. If you select simply all the face of the model, uh, it will not be correct. Why? Because you will select some inner faces, uh, for example the, the connection between the lamp and this, and I don't want it because there is no convection on this face. Convection is only applied on the external face of the model. So I double click here to uh, unselect and what I will do is I check here front selection only on the toolbar, on the section bar. Click here and now if I select the parts only the parts which are uh, on the screen will be selected. So now I just have to uh, rotate my model and try to select all the surfaces which are external. Let's see if I didn't miss one. Okay, here Okay. Okay, so now uh, I selected all the faces and I'll be able to enter the the coefficients. So first of all, uh, the temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and the film coefficient. So uh, the film coefficient is equal to uh, 1 power minus 5, so minus 5, not minus 15, and I can click on OK. So now I assigned my convection. So if you want to check that you assign correctly the load, you can still go here, uh, you can edit the load, you can, if you don't want to use millimeter, you can also check in meter unit. So uh, you can edit, and you can see that um, now it's 10 because it's meter unit. Okay, put it again in millimeter. Okay, now uh, it's so it sounds good. I almost finished. So now what I have to do is to mesh it because it's a finite element analysis. So uh, let's mesh it. 3D mesh, let's use 2, 2.2 for the mesh size, select first the lamp and glass, okay, select the right property, okay, now it's meshed and let's mesh again aluminium, Okay, looks, looks good. There's still one thing that I didn't do, uh, and I will do it right now, is to assign some contacts between the parts, because you have to remember that all the parts are always linked together, and if you don't have contact, the value of the temperature from one node to another cannot pass. So this is why we have to use contacts. So NFX is using the auto contact. So you have 
manual contact as well, but uh, here I'll just use auto contact. I will use the basic welded contact and click on OK. And if you want to check that it has been correctly assigned, you can go in the walkthrough and just click here so you see contact is assigned here. Looks good. So now the last step is to create the analysis case. So uh, let's go in the analysis tab, click on general case, let's give it a name. And even if I'm doing a linear study heat transfer, I have to check nonlinear steady heat transfer. The reason is simple. Uh, sometimes you have to consider the radiation as well, and as I told you, radiation is nonlinear type of load. So if you use radiation, it will be nonlinear analysis. If you don't have radiation in your analysis, then it will be linear. So it will automatically check if you have radiation or not, and it will make it linear. Okay, let's uh, set the initial temperature to 20 degree and now I can run my analysis so uh, as you see already some some model okay lm 3 sometimes you may see some Korean characters in the menu but this is because my computer is in Korean so uh, I'm sorry about that. I hope you will matter. Okay, so the analysis launched. And you see in one step it's finished because it's linear. And it took 19 seconds and now I can check my temperature. So this is the distribution of temperature that I get. So uh, maximum temperature is here at 60 degree, uh, 60.12 degree, and you have the minimum temperature here at 44 degree. So you can check temperature, the solid thermal gradient, uh, and the heat flux. Okay, so this is the basic uh, example about how to perform a heat transfer analysis. So it's quite simple and if you have a question about that, don't, uh, don't hesitate to ask right now. Okay, we'll uh, continue. So, if you have a question, you can ask. Uh, otherwise, I will just continue. And talk about nonlinear heat transfer right now. So, uh, nonlinear heat transfer analyzes the dealing with the conditions, uh, including the thermal flow and condition that retain a temperature dependency. So, uh, to, to talk short, shorter, the matter property uh, and maybe the, the function you assign may change with the time. So, you have an example here, a PCB. So, you have some heating of the, the, the chip, which is changing for 20 to 50 degrees. And, <coughs> sorry, uh, you have here also some change of temperature. You have some change in the heat flux and the heat generation, so this is why it's not linear. Um, now let's talk about steady state and transient because it's also very uh, important to know the difference. So steady state is um, when, uh, let's say, when you have an object that you analyze, after a certain time, it reaches a kind of steady temperature state. So, even if at the beginning maybe it's uh, the temperature is changing, after a certain time, it ma makes an equilibrium with the air around and the temperature becomes stable. So, this is called the steady state. So, when you uh, analyze steady state heat transfer, it means you are only interested by this steady state, what I will have as the final temperature. So this is what we did in the previous tutorial. I only show you what is the, the temperature at the steady state that I will get, but you don't know how it will change from the beginning uh, the analysis. At the contrary, the transient analysis is uh, when you have some load or boundary condition that are changing based on the time. 
So in this case, you need to understand from the beginning of my analysis uh, to the end, what is the exact temperature behavior, how the temperature is changing in uh, the, this interval of time flow. It's not analyzing only the last, the steady state, but it's analyzing from the beginning and you have this variation of temperature uh, that you have. So, okay, so you have different analysis method to do that. And if you want to understand a bit more, I'll have a very simple example. So, uh, you can think about your shower and uh, when you, you go in the shower from at the beginning, you start the water, you open uh, the tube, and then the, the temperature is very cold, right? And then after a very short time, it becomes very hot, so you have to be careful. And afterwards, it's, it's just be, 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 beginning to, to be the right temperature. So this is the transient state, so at the beginning, when it's cold and then hot, and then cold and then hot, this is called the transient. And then, after a certain moment, you reach the steady state and you have the temperature you want, which is the, the best temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. So, uh, why are we uh, analyzing this transient state? Well, you can think that if, uh, uh, if it's become very cold, very hot from the beginning, it's dangerous. So, it can hurt you uh, because it's too hot or it's too, too cold. So, you analyze that to know exactly what is the difference uh, at the beginning with the, the temperature you want. So, if you want to read a bit more about that, you can go on my blog, fear4all.com, where I described this uh, phenomenon. And also a lot of other things, so if you're interested in FEA uh, and a bit more uh, topics about that, you can go on this blog and there's a lot of interesting things, well, I hope. Okay, now um, I'll show you a second example, which is an example of uh, transient heat transfer analysis of a PCB board. So, uh, this is the condition that I want to apply. I have uh, first some uh, temperature condition on the chip, which are changing. I have some heat flux which is changing also, I have some heat generation which is changing and I have the ambient temperature which is increasing as well. So I want to simulate that and to, to simulate this changing boundary condition I have only one alternative which is to use uh, the transient heat transfer. So let's go again in the software. Okay, uh, briefly, I will open my uh, model. Let me search for the model. Okay. And let me import this uh, board. So again, I'm sorry, I have to search in all that. Board. Okay. So here it is. So the first thing I'll do, uh, as the previous, I have to check that my model is suitable for this analysis. And here I have no inscription, so I don't need to suppress that. But I have to check that. Oh, there is no imprint. So as you see, no imprint. So I have to create this imprint. Let's create the with the auto connect boolean. Okay, now it's connected. I can check again to be sure. Okay. And second thing is to assign my material. So I already created two uh, materials. So we don't lose some time on that. Uh, so I can show you the characteristic if you want to see that, conviction, the specific heat, etc. And the PCB material which will be assigned to the PCB. Uh, I have to create the property. 
So uh, let's create a property for the component and for the PCB. Okay. Now that I did that, uh, one important step is to create the time function because as I told you the boundary condition will change. Uh, so same to not lose some time on that because we are in the webinar and I don't want to, to lose too, too much of your time. I created this function first. So this is the change of the ambient temperature. So you see it changed from zero to 50 seconds, it's changed to 20 to 30 degree. And I created the same, the heat flux, the heat generation and the two kind of temperature uh, change. So now the only thing I have to do is to assign that to my model. So you have to something to take care of. You have some tab called static heat analysis. So if you do that, you have heat load, but this is only for steady state analysis. So you have to go here in the dynamic transient heat analysis to use the transient heat loads. So these are the loads used for transient heat analysis. So don't take the load from the previous uh, steady state in the transient, it will not work. So, okay, so first of all, let's assign temperature to um, these four chips. So, uh, I have the function, so here it will be temperature 50, and this function will be multiplied by the value I enter in this temperature field. So, I just enter 1, and the value I entered in my function will be added, so, uh, so it's okay if I just enter 1. Apply. Now, let's do the same on these chips, but with a different temperature function. Okay, so I assign the changing temperature. Now, um, let's assign the, the temperature source. So, uh, temperature changing with... Uh, so, I have to click on source. This is in red, this is my temperature source. Um, same, so one I assign wine, and I assign the base function called heat generation to my part. And finally, let's assign the heat flux. So if heat flux is assigned to the face of these chips. So again, one and heat flux function. And now uh, let's assign the convection. Convection. So same that for a previous model, you have to select only the external faces. So do not select the interface between the the, the parts. So this is also one of the reasons uh, that I divided, I I made the imprint of the faces on this part because I don't want to uh, for them to be selected. So again, I will do the same trick: uh, front selection only. I select all that, all that. So you could have other method of selection if you don't want to do that. Uh, you could, for example, hide some parts, some uh, parts here assign the convection to one part and then assign to another, but it's more complex, so let's just do like that. Um, one again, and here I have to choose ambient temperature function for the ambient, because the ambient temperature is changing. For the, um, the film coefficient, 2 power minus 5, and click on OK, and you see my convection is now assigned. Last step uh, is to mesh this. So uh, I will first hide these labels because uh, it's a bit annoying. Okay, so let's mesh that. Uh, let's use hybrid meshing. Oh, okay, 
3.99 okay let's select these parts here hybrid meshing assign the right property click on apply now mesh this part with the PCV property Now um, you have to assign the the convection uh, sorry the contacts, otherwise you will not have you will have no uh, heat transfer between the the chips and the board. So uh, same method automatic. Let's check all this. Let's set the searching distance to 0 0.01. Click on OK. And let's check if my contacts are correctly assigned. So as you see, it looks good. Okay. Now let's uh, create a sensor. So a sensor is uh, quite useful. It helps you to test the temperature during the analysis. So for example, on this part, I want to test the temperature. Uh, let's say the maximum temperature. So when you do the analysis, you know, uh, for example, when you want to stop the analysis. So it can stop automatically if the temperature reaches a certain state. So now let's create our analysis case. So give it a name. So I have to use nonlinear transient heat transfer this time. Check that all the contacts and the mesh set are assigned. Okay, it's good. And go in the analysis control. So here it's a nonlinear transient analysis. So you should be careful on the option uh, you set, especially the time duration of the analysis and the number of time steps. So this is very important. So uh, 1,200 seconds, let's say. Uh, let's set 200 time steps. And here you have you see the the sensor condition that I just created. So uh, I, what I can say is that if the sensor value is superior to 100, it will stop my analysis. Or when the temperature changes less than uh, let's say 0 0.001, so it means when I reach the steady state because the temperature doesn't change much, I will stop also my analysis. So the sensor is helping to do that. In general I can set the initial temperature to 20. Okay. Okay and I can start to solve. So it may, it may take one or two minutes. Maybe less. So you have the this time you see you have not only one point, but you have the change of the temperature in uh, real time when you do the analysis. So you have the percentage of analysis completed here. Uh, the temperature increase, so this is the maximum temperature uh, along with the time. So you can monitor the maximum temperature. And here you have the convergence state uh, of the norm. So let's just wait. And you see my analysis is finished before that the end. Uh, if you look at the, the time step here, it's written 31%. So uh, if I do all the time steps that I define, it should, uh, it should do 100%. So I have to wait three times more. But in this step, my sensor condition stopped the analysis before the end. So it only took 37 seconds. So it makes you gain a lot of time. So let's uh, go back to the model and just watch the results. So this is the initial temperature. And as you see, temperature is changing with the time. So if I drag and drop this, I can just drag along the time what is changing, what is... So you see you have heat generation here. 
So from the beginning, 21, 25, uh, here maximum 60 degree, 64, and at this time, uh, on this chip, nine, 96 degree, and when it reached 100 degree, the analysis stopped because of the sensor. Okay, so this all for this uh, second uh, example. Let's go back to the slide. So again, if you have some question, you can uh, ask. Now, um, the, the last part, the thermal stress analysis. So uh, we'll talk about what is the thermal stress first. So um, you know that heat uh, is making some kind of effect on the structural material because uh, when the temperature is increasing the material expands and when the temperature decreases the material contracts so uh, it is creating some internal stress and deformation in your model so here you have a small example when you have um, a beam which is free to move on, on one hand when uh, you do the heating, it just expands. When this beam is uh, fixed on the two ends, it expands on the two sides like that, and then you have some thermal stress inside. So uh, this is the law that is used. So you see, you have the total deformation is the summation of the structural deformation plus the thermal deformation. So you have the coefficient alpha which uh, corresponds to the heat, uh, the, the, the coefficient, how it's called again, the, you have it here in the software, I show you, in the material constant, the thermal expansion coefficient, yes, I forgot the name, okay, here, so this is it. So, um, you have several ways to calculate this thermal stress. Uh, the first way is when the temperature is specified by the user. So, it means you have a structural analysis and you decide to define temperature in a specific point. So, you can do linear static analysis and it will, at the same time, give you the result due that by the temperature. So, it's a kind of uh, direct coupling, let's say. The second type is... Um, you, do, you obtain first the temperature distribution because you don't know the temperature distribution and then uh, you, do, you take this temperature distribution as a heat load and you apply it on your structural analysis to get the result. So this is what the heat, uh, the, the heat stress analysis is doing automatically. And the subtype is the coupled analysis, so you, you, considering the thermal stress so do the temperature difference. So you have a direct change of temperature in function of the deformation. Uh, so this is called uh, direct coupling. Now uh, again I have my last uh, simulation example for uh, today which is this chip thermal stress uh, analysis. So I'll show you how to do that again in uh, my lesson effects. So the boundary condition I consider are uh, the following one. So my uh, chip will be fixed on the pins. Then uh, I will assign some heat generation to the part which is inside uh, the chip. And uh, finally I will assign some convection around. So let's go into the software. Let's close this model. Let's open a new window and let's import my uh, model. So this is this chip. Okay, here it is. So again, same than the previous model, I have to be sure that the model is ready. So again, I verify that, uh, as you see, the imprint is not done. 
So again, I will just auto-connect all that. So this is a really good feature. I like it very much to uh, create the imprints directly. And if you look at now, uh, it's OK. So this is to assign a convection. You, you have to be sure that this is done before uh, beginning the analysis. So let's uh, assign the materials. Material create isotropic. Uh, material for the chip will be uh, will be ceramic porcelain. And the material I will use for the pins will be copper. Okay, so I created the two. Let's create the property. Ceramic. And copper. Okay. Now uh, that this is done, let's uh, create the boundary conditions. So the first boundary condition is a structural boundary condition, which is to fix the chip. Because you should not forget that this time I will make some kind of coupled analysis between structural and heat. So I need to assign at the same time structural loads and heat loads. So I didn't fix the previous model because I was only doing heat analysis, but this one I have to fix it, otherwise I cannot do structural analysis. Then let's, um, let's assign the heat source. So heat source to the red part. And uh, it will be 0 0.01 watts by millimeter cube. Uh, if you don't know how to estimate this coefficient, if you only have the value in watts, then there is uh, some way to do that. First of all, you have to select your part, then go into the property window here, and right-click in here, and you'll see you'll have the volume which appears here. So 633 millimeter cube, and you can use it to uh, calculate this uh, coefficient. So the only thing you have to do is that to divide the, the value in watt of 30 watt, for example, and divide it by uh, the value in millimeter, and you'll get the power per volume heat generation coefficient to assign. Now, uh, second thing, convection. So uh, I think you remember how I did previously. Uh, I use the same trick, front selection only. Let's select all the parts here. Let's rotate the model to be sure I select all the surfaces. It looks good. Now uh, let's assign the ambient temperature. So ambient temperature 20 degrees Celsius. And the film coefficient is 2. Uh, power minus 5. And OK. Now it's um, almost over. What I have to do is two things. First of all, uh, assign the contacts. Contacts. So sometimes it happens that you forgot to do that in thermal analysis, but don't forget. Geometry. Apply. OK, and the mesh. So let's again use this hybrid meshing. I like very much the hybrid meshing because it's uh, quite, uh, it's quite good. Hybrid meshing uh, plus tetra, all that automatically. What do you want more? OK, ceramic, apply. Now let's select the pins and copper. Okay, the model is done. I have to create the analysis case. C 
So, uh, steady state thermal stress. Steady state. Uh, where is it? Linear thermal stress. Steady state. Okay, this one. Okay, as an all boundary condition, I have to assign the initial temperature of the parts. And I can now run the analysis. Okay, very fast. It only took two seconds. So this is the temperature result. So you have a maximum of temperature of 150 degree at the middle and here on the pins 120 degree. And what we want to see is the deformation. So I can increase a bit the deformation so you see it better. And this is the deformation due to the heat. So you, the maximum deformation is 0 0.03 millimeter. And of course zero here because the fit picks are thin. The the pin are fixed. And the stress form is a stress here in the pin. So you have a big font with us here, and you can check the uh, safety factor as well. Okay. Okay, it's all for this uh, example. Let's uh, finish the presentation. So I, I have only three or four slides left. First of all, uh, comparison between heat transfer and linear static. Uh, maybe you're wondering uh, what is uh, why in all FEA software I have always structural and also heat transfer because these are two things quite different. But in fact, if you look at the mathematical model, it's not so different. Uh, you have a relation between the, the, the quantities. The Hooke's law is the equivalent of the Fourier's law. The model of elasticity is like the thermal conductivity. The displacement is like the temperature. And the equations are exactly the same. So this is why it's very easy to perform a thermal analysis. Of course, if you do go on nonlinear or transient state, this is different. But uh, I'm just comparing for steady state heat transfer. Now uh, let's uh, consider the difference between the structural and CFD. Uh, because some of you are asking why. I cannot consider the fluid around. I only consider the structure. Well, this is a good question, and in sometimes you have to perform CFD analysis to uh, to consider the heat exchange between the solid and the fluid. But if you do structural heat transfer, you just neglect the the react the, uh, the behavior of the fluid. So this is two two things. If you have CFD fluid solid coupled analysis so with heat transfer, you have to model everything. You have to model the solid parts and you have to model the fluid around. So it makes a very big model. Uh, if you model only the structural, it's much simpler because you only model the solid parts and all the things around the, what the fluid is doing is uh, considered by the, some approximation, the, the, the convection, uh, the fluid which is uh, fixed at an ambient temperature, so this is ideal, let's say. So, uh, if you want to know more details about that, I'll do a webinar next uh, Tuesday about this, uh, to show you how to do this CFD fluid solid coupled analysis, so forced convection and uh, natural convection in CFD in my lesson effect, because uh, we can do that as well. Now, how you can get more training material, so if you want to, to exercise a bit, you can go on our website, mylessonfx.com. Uh, you have a tutorial section here, so you just click here, and you'll find the three tutorials that I did today in detail, so you can uh, perform again and be sure that you understood how it works. And if you want to uh, join one of the next webinars we uh, did, you can just click on try e-learning and then uh, you will be moved to uh, the you will see all the webinar session we planned so uh, next 
Tuesday, we have this uh, simulate, simulate force and natural convection of PCB using uh, Midas and FX. So this is what I will uh, do next week. So you can, you're invited, of course, to join this webinar. And if you don't have Midas and FX yet, you can uh, download the free trial for 30 days on our website uh, freely. So thank you very much for attending this webinar. Uh, we had a lot of people today. I have a lot of questions too, so uh, I, I don't know if I will be able to answer everything, but uh, please, if you have more questions, you can still write. And uh, I'll wait just one or two minutes, and then I will answer to you. I really hope this webinar was informative and help you for heat transfer, because this is not a easy topic. Okay, thank you. So, um, I can't answer all the questions, so I will uh, answer by email. So, uh, don't... Uh, I, I will, right after this webinar, I will send you an email with the answer. Okay, so I hope you will join the next webinar. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, see you next time.